Great. Hello, everybody. So this is this is very exciting. Uh, my name is John Goodwin, and I'll be the uh, host for today's event. And we have our special guest, our Echo Chernick, who is the Illustrators of the Future coordinating judge and the artist for volumes 36 and 37, and Jody Lynn Nye, who is the Writers of the Future judge who wrote stories in both volumes 36 and 37 inspired by the art of volumes 36 and 37. Uh, as, we, as we get started here, I recommend that you uh, uh, put, if you're on, on, uh, on the Zoom event, uh, click to the view to gallery view. It'll make it easier when we do the actual release video uh, so that all the different images of all the different people won't uh, cover up the uh, artwork as, it, as it's uh, unfolding. So basically what we're going to have here is five different pieces of this over the next 15, 20 minutes. And um, it begins with volume 36 released when uh, we had a pandemic. And so we weren't able to have the big uh, gala awards ceremony in Hollywood like I always do. This year, we're doing a combined event as a result with volumes 36 and 37. And Echo had originally originated an idea of putting together a complimentary cover for volume 37 so that when we have the events uh, held together, it actually fits as an event. It was a brilliant idea. So that's what we're, that's what we're about on this, on this uh, reveal that you're about ready to see. So when everybody comes together at Hollywood, uh, we have covers that actually work together with the same elements. So um, the Rise of the Future judge, Jody Lynn Nye, uh, we'll talk about how the art inspired her stories for Volume 36, which is the Phoenix's Peace, and Volume 37, which is the Phoenix's War. And this will be very exciting. She's also going to be talking about a little bit what, why Rise of the Future is so special with the type of, of uh, stories you're going to get in it. Then we're going to release the cover for Volume 37, and the Rise and all of you will be able to have an opportunity to uh, speak up and, and uh, cheer and whatnot. We'll, we'll unmute everybody so you can do that. And then Echo is going to go back on and discuss the art in Volume 37 and what makes it so special. And finally, what's really exciting about this, we have, we have a way special offer. We've never done this before, but we have a very special offer that I guarantee you won't want to miss out on. And that's the very last part of this, of this event. So um, here we go. We're going to get started now. So welcome uh, Jody and I to talk about um, Rise of the Future, the story and the art, how it inspired it. Hi there. I am proud to be a judge for the Writers of the Future contest. It is the largest speculative fiction contest in the world and one of the few that is free to anyone to enter. And I am uh, very pleased to be able to participate in this. As a judge, I get to see stories that are submitted by, by uh, people from all over the world, over 150 countries. And the quality of the stories that I get is surprisingly high, surprisingly delightful. And when, uh, when a writer wins one of the 12 slots over the course of the year, first, second, and third, for every single quarter, and you can, can keep on submitting stories, by the way, until you win or until you pro out, you have enough pro sales that you no longer qualify as a, as a dedicated amateur, uh, then your stories are compiled with the others and an illustrator one of the illustrators of the future winners is assigned to your story and gives the best possible piece of art to it. Well, I do this backwards. I was, uh, I, a little birdie told me that two years ago, Echo Chernick, the managing judge for the illustrators of the future was going to be doing the piece of art for volume 36. And I went to uh, John Goodwin, our, our publisher and, sa and said, uh, I would really love to write a story that goes with that. I've done it once before uh, on volume 34 that the cover art was, uh, was by a man named Ciruelo who does incredibly beautiful work. And I wrote a story based upon that piece. Well, if it was going to be possible, I wanted to have a crack at uh, write, writing something that went with one of Echo's beautiful pieces of art. And they said, yes, we, had to put up with the pandemic getting in the way of the gala that normally uh, celebrates those winners for the year, the uh, 12 illustrator and 12 writer uh, winners. So at, as John has said, a combined ceremony is going to be coming. And I uh, have also been privileged to 
be included in what's coming up for volume 37. I, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. And if uh, I could come in later and uh, have a few more things to say. Okay, great. You know, we want to make sure that when they see the actual final thing, it's going to be the, the series ta-da. So, um, so now it gives me an amazing amount of excitement to, uh, to be able to present the uh, cover art for Elwin Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, Volume 37. Gorgeous. It looks really cool. Yeah. Bring it yeah. out for us. Really nice. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm delighted. Gorgeous. Yeah. Very good. I can hear everybody. So um, we're very excited about this. I think it's an absolutely beautiful cover. Echo was an awesome artist on this. And uh, um, each year the covers just get better and it just absolutely. It, and if you have any particular uh, comments, feel free to put that in the uh, in the chat. Um, no, we've gotten, um, Christine Ree said, beautiful, um, Michelle Locke, fabulous, Angela looks awesome. That's great. So feel free to keep on doing that. John Haas, what an absolutely gorgeous cover and, um, an actual fact, we've got a squeeze, stunning. It looks great. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous as expected. Eye catching, amazing, gorgeous colors. I'm only seeing. Number 36, okay, we're gonna, what we're gonna do here, this is awesome here. We're gonna play this one more time here, and um, the second time's even gonna be better. So, uh, Jason? You go. That is awesome. It's gorgeous. I, I could never have foreseen when I when I did the, the story for 36 based on that piece that I would have the chance to follow the characters forward and have such an awesome inspiration. Yeah, it's truly amazing. So again, uh, everyone please uh, pre-order this book now. The link is being put into the chat. We're putting it throughout there so you can actually uh, get in pre-order because, um, like I said, the last part of this event is uh, this really cool um, offer we've got for you when you get it. But first, uh, we have Echo now who's going to speak a bit about the art that's in Volume 37. Uh, there's something that's unique about Writers of the Future and Illustrators of the Future that you don't find in any other program, illustrator or writer program, and she's going to talk specifically about what you've got to look forward to in uh, Volume 37 in the Art. Echo? Hi, I'm Echo Trenick, the coordinating judge for the Illustrators of the Future. Um, and uh, of course, as you just saw, I did both covers. It's fun working with uh, with Jody on the covers because it, uh, it gives me a chance to make something that inspires her to go ahead and run with it. And uh, with the second cover, I wanted to put an element of adventure in it. Um, so that uh, she could just take that. And I had no idea where she was going to go with it, and I haven't read it yet, so I don't know where she went with it. Um, but I specifically wanted to give her that chance to just take it out and run with it. So uh, hopefully, uh, I'm sure it's amazing, like the first story was. Um, but the best part is, is that the um, the, uh, the it's the illustrations in the book because the entire. Uh, obligation of the cover artist is to get people to pick up this book and be and flip through it and then 
and then see the amazing art inside. And that's such an honor and responsibility to uh, to get to, uh, to, you know, to inspire people to pick it up and read it because the work for this year and for 36 is just phenomenal. I, um, I get to art direct and work with the artists on each of their pieces to try to get them to be the best that they can be. I, uh, I really believe in inspiring and working with each artist to get their own personal style to be as, as strong and you know to, to really strengthen that and to uh, to give advice based on my years of experience and as an art director um, because sometimes the pieces are just you know they're amazing but if I can just make them help you know make them a little bit better or give advice to um, to you know to really uh, to inspire the artists further it, it just makes the piece even stronger and they, they learn and that's the entire point of this contest is to you know, to give the, the artists a chance to learn how to make their pieces better. Um, they get to go through the process of working with an art director, which is something that um, a lot of artists don't get to do until they're just thrown out there. So by being a winner of this contest, you, you not only win, you get to work with me to develop this piece and kind of learn how to work with an art director. So, you know, how, how do I, how do I, um, how do I communicate with the art director back and forth and how do I, you know, do this in the real world? And it's just, you know, it's like a, it's part of an education, which is, is, is amazing. And then you get to see it published, which is really, really cool. So um, I can't wait, wait for you to see these pieces uh, that are coming up. Um, and what's also amazing, Echo, Echo, it's also what's amazing about the art that you've, that you've done as a coordinating judge, and it's opened up mostly, uh, like I've never seen before, that you've got winners from all over the world, and so there's no standard art style. There's so many different types of arts. There's the, uh, we've had winners from uh, Turkey and from Iran, from Australia, from uh, UK, uh, Portugal, as well as the United States and Canada, South Africa, and it's all different styles of art. So it's not like this is a certain look. You know, so can you just explain that briefly too? It's like how it is that that could occur, because that doesn't happen anywhere else. As the, uh, well, as the coordinating judge, I get all of the pieces submitted to me first. And I like diversity in, in art. I like, um, I appreciate uh, all different styles of art. I appreciate, as you can see by my own collection of pieces that I've done, I, I'm inspired by work, artwork from all over the world. So when I get artwork that's submitted by the winners, you know, I, wa I want to give to the other judges a, a wide variety of of pieces that are influenced from different styles and different cultures. And sometimes I can tell they're from, they're like specifically like a, they have a, a Scandinavian bent to them or though, you know, you, you can kind of sometimes see, but I don't know where the winners are from. So I have no idea. So I'm just going based on the, uh, on the art. And I, um, I look at it and I judge it based on the, 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 the quality of the work. Um, how proficient does the artist seem with their medium? Um, as well as, um, you know how consistent their pieces are, and if they tell if they tell a story specifically, I like to look for you know if it tells you know tells a story about fairy tale something. But I I don't stick with one particular medium. I, I like I, I'm trying to encourage the contest to have artists that are proficient in many different mediums. So um, sometimes contests uh, will go ahead and they'll still like to still like to stick with like just oil paintings or just a very specific narrow style, and I want to guide this um, this contest so that it welcomes a lot of different styles so that uh, you, you can see that not only are stories taking place in different genres but the art is completely different in different genres and it's exciting for what it is so um, absolutely so which is you do a beautiful job with that so thank you very much and I said people if you you know that itself is its own reason to get volume 37 so thank you very much echo on that so now um, so you said the things you wanted to say, Jody, or, or did you make your last two points you wanted to make? Well, I think that uh, I agree with Echo entirely that the number of stories, the style of stories. Now, in, in my case, all of the stories that I receive are in the English language, but it all, you can also tell when you have the influence of somewhere else, something else, whether somebody has studied the culture of another place or uh, comes from it. And I get the gift of being able to see those and we work with the writers just in the same way that Echo works with, with the illustrators. And they tend to be a little bit older. Uh, Echo has had some incredibly young winners, but 
we guide them forward. We, we show them what it's like to be in the company of professionals, to give them advice, uh, marketing advice, uh, perhaps understanding how the publishing world works a little bit better that, that they've never worked with before. You can write stories forever and never have one published. But the winners get a, a week-long seminar with, with noted professionals. Uh, it's taught by David Farland and Tim Powers, who are very well-known uh, fantasy writers. But all of the rest of the judges as well give them advice, and we are open to them. We are there for them, even after the contest is over, even after the year has gone by. So it's, uh, it, it forms a relationship. And that is also incredibly invaluable for young writers is not to be out there uh, floating all by yourself anymore, but to have people who have been in the business a long time as resources for you. Not only have you written something wonderful and had it published, but you've also joined a company of fellow professionals who are going to be there for you. And it's a wonderful thing. Great. Thank you very much, Jody. Okay, now, last but not least, we have this special offer that anybody who gets uh who pre-orders the uh volume 37 and it officially releases um when we have our event so we're obviously going to have it there the night of the event but on trade lines it releases in the beginning of november so right now we between now and then we want to be able to get as many pre-orders as possible obviously we want to be able to launch it with a national bestseller for all the wolf 37 winners and 36 winners to help support that um, we're going to be doing a lot of events, bookstore signings with volumes 36 and 37 together. So uh, we're looking forward to a, like a really great end of the year for writers of the future on these sales. So what we have now is the special bundle that we've created for anybody that pre-orders. So Jason, okay, so this is the, um, the pre-order bundle and what it has in it is three different sets of wallpapers for desktop and for a phone. It's got the ebook. And it's got the um, uh, special e-tips, which has essays from what writers of future judges, uh, past and present. So we're going to walk through each one of these things here. So next. So here's the desktop. This is the Phoenix itself. And so this is a desktop or mobile uh, screensaver. And then next, we have the desktop image of Phoenix Passage, the art, and then the mobile. Uh, image for the screensaver on the mobile device. Next. And then we have the desktop of Milana, the Chosen of the Phoenixes, and the mobile. So all three of these screensavers, three of these sets for the desktop and for the uh, for the, your phone, are available on this. And the, But that's not all. Next. You get a copy of Rise of Future Volume 31. Now what's special about this one here, it has uh, stories and essays from Orsa Scott Card, Kevin J. Anderson, Rebecca Mesta, Larry Niven, and Bob Eggleton, as well as the 25 award-winning authors and illustrators. Next. And then the uh, e-tips, the advice for new writers, and those are all judges. You see um, Nede Kofor, Larry Niven, there's Dave Wolverton, Kevin Anderson. Up right is uh, Anne McCaffrey, and left is um, Frank Herbert and then Elwin Hubbard. And so all of them have essays in this thing here which help provides tips on what they did and what helped them and what will help uh, other spying writers. So that's that. So what we have then, there's one more Jason. There we go. So what you do then is you pre-order Rise of the Future either at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, your favorite independent, whatever's, and email evidence to customers at galaxypress.com. So email that proof of purchase to customers at galaxypress.com. And then we send you a link which enables you to download your e-bundle with all those different items on it. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of social posts on this as well to make sure that uh, everybody gets a chance to do this. But please take this and when you get this, share it with your friends too. We want everybody to uh, experience who our judges deem as the best new writers and the best new artists of uh, science fiction and fantasy. So with that, I thank you all for attending. Again, please get your copy right now while it's fresh in your mind uh, of Writers of Future Volume 37. Send us the, um, the evidence and we'll send you the link so you can get all these different things. So again, thank you very much. Have a great rest of the Memorial Weekend and enjoy Writers of the Future. So long. Thank you. You're welcome.
Thanks, John. Wonderful. Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye, Elizabeth. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. I hadn't seen the, the final version of the art, and it's amazing. It is. It's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. Echo did a wonderful time job. Mm -hmm. Catching all the colors.